good place now. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, we're talking about narcissism. We're talking about what narcissism is, how to spot narcissism. We're talking on about gray rock, when to use the gray rock, like whole concept of how to offset the narcissist, but even better yet, we might not even be able to do that. We might have to cut ties completely. So we're talking today about narcissism. In studio today, joining me later on in the hour, Reggie Harvey. Reggie Harvey is the author of Anatomy of a Patient. He is a survivor of a near-death illness, and his perspective is keen, and that's why he's on this show. He's going to be joining us live here in just a bit. He's in studio. Also, later on, Arnold Smith. Arnold will be joining us live, the creator of the Connection app. He'll be talking about relationships and how important important relationships are and but better yet how to be liked by people how to get that right energy to have that right energy to be liked by people and to really understand what energy matters and how to know where you stand and how to really generate that positive energy so people really connect with you so tonight we're talking about narcissism and i know that that's something that i've talked about before and i know it's something that i've talked about often but i think it's something that needs to be talked about more so I think it's something that needs to be talked about. I think it's something that needs to be explored. So let's talk about that tonight. First off, I want to talk about the signs of a narcissist because we really need to talk about that because some people don't realize the signs of narcissism, right? You know, one of the signs that a narcissist does, a thing that the narcissist does is they do the blame game, right? We do this blame game. So we're, we're, they're constantly blaming us for the things that they do. We're constantly blaming us for the stuff that they've done in their life. Um, and that's fine, but a lot of times we don't realize where the blame is coming from. We actually think that we're part of the problem, right? And we internalize that when we're with the narcissist. And so the blame game is something that I really want you to think about. Another thing that the narcissist will do is that they're always right. Okay. I mean, I'm telling you, a narcissist is never going to be wrong. And the thing about it is, is that that's just part of their makeup, the way that they've been created. Now, you have to understand that narcissism to me can be created in two ways. One, um, yes, there's talk about genetic, you know, predisposition, but also environment. Okay. The reason why a narcissist is created is because that's a safety mechanism for the narcissist and it's created at a really young age. Okay. So let's think about that. So the environment was created with that narcissist because they were either in a relationship with a family dynamic that was narcissistic. They were in a dynamic where they felt uncomfortable or non-safe. And so there's a lot of different ways of how we create that narcissist. Very interesting. But it's not about – we're not trying to figure out how the narcissist is created. We're not trying to think about just all the scientific thought process and psychological process behind the narcissist. That's for another show. We're talking about understanding the narcissist, being able to spot the narcissist, and deciding what you're going to do with that situation. Okay. One of the things that I want you to think about is that with the narcissist, image is so important. Okay? It's all about image. That's all it is. It's all an image game. Okay? And that's the thing that I think is so interesting is that, you know, when you're dealing with a narcissist, you're not dealing with somebody that's, um, you know, really talking from the heart, you know, and really catching what you're saying and really, you know, feeling that. You're really dealing with somebody that's really about image conscious. That's what it is. And so if you fit into the dynamic of what an amazing hot girl looks like or a hot guy looks like or somebody that they want to spend time with, it's all image. You're going to really get the attention of a narcissist. And what's funny about that is later on when we talk about gray rock, you're going to realize that when we make some changes to our imagery to stop exciting the narcissist, we cut the supply. But I don't want to give it all away right now because there's ways of dealing with the narcissist that you don't have to go cold turkey. Okay, another thing about narcissism is the selfishness. And I know that many of you out there say, you know what, I have a best friend, um, I have a coworker, I have a family member who's a raging narcissist, and I don't know how to deal with it, I don't know what to do, and I don't know how to get my point across or how to be understood. You know what? One of the things that I've realized is that when we're dealing with narcissists, we have a tendency of over-explaining. We have a tendency of trying to get them to understand where we're coming from, and we keep thinking we're having these amazing breakthroughs. We keep thinking we're having these amazing breakthroughs, and we're not. 
I don't remember how many times, I can't count how many times I've been on the phone with a coworker or a friend of mine that was a raging narcissist where every time I got off the phone, I was like, I think they got it. I think they got it, and tomorrow is going to be a totally different day. It's going to be awesome. And the next day, it sucks. Okay, it's no different. It's the same thing. It might even be worse. Okay, it might even be worse because I actually believe that it was going to change. And so then I show up and it's just just as bad as it was before. You know, another thing about narcissism and people who are narcissists is they tell you what they want you to do. Okay, like like all of a sudden they're in charge, they're mom and dad. And I'm sorry to say if your mom and dad are narcissists, that's another problem as well. But they're constantly telling you what to do and constantly putting you down. Okay, the put downs are normally secretive. Okay, that's the thing. It's not like they're sitting there saying, hey, I think you're fat or you're this or that. They're actually like pretty bad put downs. They're like really sneaky and covert. Okay, the covert put downs are the things that get us because we don't really know it's really happening. We kind of feel it, but we don't. Okay, it kind of feels like icky, but it doesn't. And I'm probably being too emotional. Okay, I'm probably being too emotional. And that's what it's all about. But you know what? We're not being too emotional. The thing is, is that we think we're being too emotional and we have a tendency of being codependent, right? So that codependency makes us believe, well, it's probably all me. It's just the way I'm hearing it. It's not that big of a deal. And so one of the things that I want you all to think about real quick, just the sidebar, is that when we get into relationships with narcissists, we are either... Uh, we are either dealing with a cluster B personality disorder ourselves or, or we are a card carrying member as a codependent. Okay. And I, and it's all cool. It's fine. I mean, I've been in relationships with narcissists. I was a, I was a card carrying codependent for a very long time. I get it. I'm not putting anybody down. I've done this. This is why I can understand how to explain how to get out of it because I got out of it as well. But when we're codependent, we want to please everybody. We want everybody to like us. We want people to say, oh, my God, you're so awesome. I love you. We want to also save people. We want to help people. We want to give them that, 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 that je ne sais quoi, that thing that's like so awesome. We're going we're gonna to help them. We're going to build them up. But then when you're building up the narcissist, the thing is that we don't really understand what we're doing. We're creating more of a problem. Some people would call a monster than we already have. You know, one of the things that I think is interesting about a narcissist is they don't, they make sure that you feel really undermined that you're not good enough. Okay. So remember when we go back to the codependency traits, right? When we go back to that, one of the biggest things is that we already feel self-esteem issues already. I I don't know how many people out there right now listening, whether you're listening on 570 AM, whether you're listening on KLIF.com backslash Ashley, whether you're watching on Facebook live right now, whatever you're doing, you know, the thing is, is that they make you feel lesser than they make you feel lesser. That's their game because they want to keep you around. You know what I'm saying? Because if you feel better and you start getting powerful and you start building yourself up, then you're probably going to look around once in a while and go, what am I doing with this person? I mean, they don't build me up. They don't make me feel better. And I kind of feel bad when I'm around them a lot because they kind of make fun of me and they kind of put me down. And I don't really like feeling that way. You know, it's interesting how it's, it kind of plays into our self-esteem and our self-worth issues, and that to me is an intrinsic problem and an intrinsic detriment to the codependent. And you know, some of us might not be highly codependent, but we want to be there for people. We feel for people. We think about things. We have a good heart. Some of you out there are empathic. You care, you have love, you care for fellow people, and because of that, you fall into the trap of dealing with the narcissist. I mean, and one of the biggest things that I get upset with is that play down to try to mess with you about not being good enough. And we're going to talk about that just a little bit. We're going to talk more about narcissism. We're also going to talk about Gray Rock here in just a little bit. Reggie Harvey is going to be live. And also Arnold Smith is going to be on as well. We're going to be talking about Gray Rock, what Gray Rock is, how to use it appropriately with the narcissist. But also there might be a time when it's time to cut them completely out. If you haven't already, go online, check out my website, go to Ask. AshleyBurgess.com, Ashley, B-E-R-G-E-S.com, but also check out YouTube, Ashley, B-E-R-G-E-S, new content every week. Stay tuned, live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. I'll be back this time. (laughs) I'll be back in two shakes. Turn it up.
up and jump in the deep end on perspectives. Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On tonight's show, we're talking about narcissism, how to spot a narcissist in your life. And then in a little bit, we're going to be talking here about gray rock, how to use the gray rock technique, that methodology to, well, to just kind of take the wind out of the narcissist's sail, to just cut the little supply, you know, to stop giving them carte blanche at the supermarket of supply and say, you know what, I got to deal with this person, but I'm going to deal with them the way I want to deal with them. And then there might be a time that you got to cut them out. But you know what? If you have a child, for example, and you have a child with a spouse, an ex-spouse who's a narcissist, right? You can't just cut that spa- that ex-spouse out. It's your baby's mama or your baby's daddy. You see what I'm saying? That's, you just can't cut them out. I mean, I could, I'd be giving you bad information if I said just cut them out of your life. No, you got to deal with them for the rest of your life or until that child gets to a certain age. And even then, you're going to have to deal with the wedding and all this stuff. So you know what? You're going to deal with them. A parent, hard to cut out as well. Mom or dad, you know what I'm saying? If they're a raging narcissist, it's something you got to deal with. But you don't have to give them that supply. Later on, we have Reggie Harvey. He's going to be talking about his perspective on narcissism as well. But the idea of being able to cut that supply tie. We'll be talking about that in just a bit. He's the author of Anatomy of a Patient. Also, later on, we have Arnold Smith, the creator of the Connection app. And he'll be on in just a few minutes. We'll be talking about some cool stuff about relationships. Because, you know, relationships are cool. So we'll talk about that in a second. But when we're talking about narcissism, you know, I was just telling you about how there's the blame game. They're always right. Image conscious, all about themselves, puts you down in certain ways, even secretive ways to make you kind of question yourself, you know, makes you feel not good enough. You know, they use manipulation to get what they want. And manipulation is a really good tactic used. Manipulation is that tactic that is used that to me, it's just not cool. Okay, but it's used all the time. And then there's that technique of gaslighting too. So I'm going to manipulate you and then I'm going to make you feel bad for something that I did. And you're going to sit there and you're going to backtrack, but then I'm going to make you feel bad even more. And then if we, if you have an argument with me and I'm trying to make you feel bad, then I'm going to gaslight you about having that argument with me. See what I'm saying? So we never really deal with the real issue. Okay, and that's what's so great. That's what the narcissist does so well is I'm going to get you thinking about something way over here, like look over here at the shiny object, and then you're going to end up arguing that, and you're going to say something you don't mean because you're so so angry, and then I'm going to go back at you and say, how dare you talk to me like that? I can't believe you did that. I can't even talk to you right now. And then you're going to be trying to make up for it. You see what I'm saying? We can talk more about that at another time. You know, control is their middle name. They need constant validation. And your feelings are constantly dismissed. And there are no boundaries with a narcissist. But you know what? There can be. And that's what we're going to talk about real quick. And we're going to start talking about the concept of gray rock. Okay, so gray rock is what you do if you can't cut ties. Gray rock is what you do when you can't leave But you got to see them at some point, right? You can't just cut them out of freaking your phone. You can't block them. You can't leave them alone. You got to see them. So if you have a child with a narcissist, uh, if you have a colleague or a boss and you're working for a boss as a narcissist, you're not just going to quit your job, right? I mean, you hope that you can find another job, but you're not just going to quit your job. You have narcissistic parents, narcissistic family members. You get where I'm going with this, right? It's not just someone you met. It's not just somebody you party with. These are people you're probably related to or have a child with or something or you work for. Okay. Now, gray rock is an interesting technique because it works so well, but people don't really understand it. Okay. So what gray rock is about is you stop playing the role in the TV star in the TV show that the narcissist has you in as a supporting cast member. Okay. So you're the supporting cast member giving all the supply to the narcissist. All the supply. But see, all of a sudden, when you start doing gray rock, you you stop. And so what happens is that you become more emotionally unresponsive to their bait, to, you know, to their prompts. And so you're no longer going to give any Oscar winning performances on the drama anymore. And you know what I'm talking about. When we're dealing with narcissists, they want the drama. You know, they're going to say something. They want you to like, oh, don't leave me. I would kill myself if that happened. It'd be horrible. No, that's what they want. They want that whole Oscar performance, you know, just go out there and just bellow it out. 
You know what I mean? Cries, tears, you know, just huge tears. No, we want to stop that emotion. So we want to cut that emotional supply. And that's why they say you can't get blood from a stone. And that's why we're talking about gray rock. Another thing about gray rock is gray rock's not that interesting. Have you seen a gray rock outside before? Did you sit there and look at it? Did you sit there and say, wow, it's a beautiful rock. God, that rock is so nice. No, what happens is you saw the rock and you kept going because it wasn't interesting. Now, what's the thing about the narcissist? They don't like things that aren't interesting. They like things that are shiny and bright and interesting and feed into them and give them attention and admiration and praise. But a gray rock's not going to do that, right? We're going to stay really, really neutral. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about how that is because this is so important because once we stay neutral... And we stop giving them the emotional supply. Basically, we keep the dialogue to a minimum. We cut the supply with the narcissist because we're no longer giving the drama that they feed into. You know, relationships are really important to me. They really are. Relationships and understanding relationships and having quality relationships is the pinnacle mark of live your true life perspectives. And relationships is that balancing act. But also understanding how we can be liked and how we can be the kind of person that other people like being around. Joining me live in studio, Arnold Smith. Arnold is the advocate and champion of good habits, and he's also the creator of the Connection app. Arnold, great to have you in studio today. How you doing? Fantastic, Ashley. Thanks for having me here. Always great to have you in studio. You know, Arnold, I was going to ask you, and we talked about this a little bit before the break, um, you know, being that kind of person that other people want to be around, that they have pleasure being around, that they really get connected with, that they get energized by. You know, tell me more about how you feel people can be that way with all groups of people. Yeah, I love this topic, Ashley. You know, I think that it is a a skill that um, when you develop it has an impact on every area of your life. And, you know, what can happen is uh, in life, when we're especially when we're trying to achieve a goal um, that's bigger or just, you know, life is demanding and upsetting. And so oftentimes we that will affect how we feel and how you feel has a big impact on others. Every interaction that you have with another person is an exchange of energy. And there's this cool thing called emotional contagion that happens. And this has to do with the mirror neurons in our brain and how we experience empathy. But the bottom line is that however you're feeling, the people around you feel it too. It's just the way humans are built. So if you want to be the kind of person that everyone wants to be around, you have to pay attention to how you're feeling. You know, think about it this way. One of the highest compliments that a professional athlete can be given is that he makes the other players on his team better. Another one is even if they don't have a ton of skill, they say you've got to have him on the team because he's really good in the room. It means that simply being around these people changes how you feel and improves your performance. Uh, you know, think about when Amari Cooper came, uh, arrived, Dak Prescott went from having a passer rating of 87.4 in the seven games of the season to a passer rating of 103 in the nine games after Cooper came on board. Now, of course, Prescott also saw his pass yardage per game jump from 202 to 274. Now, a lot of that, of course, has to do with Amari's skill. But there are plenty of examples when two skilled players get together and it doesn't translate into improved performance. So it has a lot to do with the synergy that you can create uh, with due to this emotional contagion. So what you can do if you want to be a person that improves the performance of the people around you, it's, it's not that difficult. So, again, there's three things that can happen in every interaction with a person. The first one is uh, your mood can improve. Or it can just stay the same, or it can get worse. Now, of course, you know, like we talked about, this happens all below our level of awareness. But if you pay attention, you can notice it. And, you know, sometimes you, you, if a pattern emerges, you can start to feel like, I don't want to hang out with that person anymore. It seems like, you know, I don't know what happens in the interaction, but afterwards, I don't want to be with them anymore. So you might want to stop and think, how do people feel after they interact with me? What kind of emotions am I infecting them with? So if you want to be a person 
that everyone loves being around, then you want to make it a habit of generating positive emotions for others. See, in every interaction, you have a choice you can make. You can give energy, you can take energy, or you can just be neutral. And if you want to be with someone that people love working with, and also that employers love hiring, then, you know, on top of being great at your job, become great at generating positivity with people. I mean, the first part, you know, being great at your job gets you the job. The second, though, will help you stay employed and be in demand. Now, some people are super skilled at doing this at home, you know, like making people feel good, you know, family and their friends, not so much at work. And then other people, it's the opposite. And what you want to take a look at is in every interaction, how are people being left? So, you know, for me, I always, uh, I personally try and uh, leave some positive energy with everyone I meet. That's just one of the things I'm committed to. And I think that if people do that, not only do their lives improve, but all the people uh, around them, their lives improve too. So that's what I'm an advocate for. I think that's awesome. And and basically positive change as well. And we, we have that ability within us to make those changes. We have those abilities to be more self-aware. And I think when we become more self-aware, we become more dynamic and we begin to understand ourselves better. But we also put ourselves out there for other people to understand us as well. Yeah, actually, that's that's totally great. And, you know, um, one of the things that when we built the Connection app, it was really all about that, to help people become aware of the habits that they have when they're interacting with people and develop the habits that really generate those moments of positivity. So people just love being around you. So uh, that's, that's exactly what the app's all about. And where can people find the connection app? Well, they can find uh, our ad on, on your website, ashleyburgess.com, uh, or they can find it in your favorite app store. Awesome. Well, I look forward to seeing you next week and with more information and knowledge to help us make our lives even better. Thanks, Ashley. You know, I love I love his concept. I love what he's saying, and I love what uh, the Connection app is all about. It's about connecting people. It's about creating better relationships. You know, when we return, we're we'll talking more about Gray Rock. We're going to talk about how to do it appropriately. Reggie's going to give his perspective on that and dealing with narcissists as well. I'm going to fully pull out the red carpet of how to do it, but also I'm going to also give you the information on when it's time to just cut ties all together. If for some reason you can't find my show sometime and you're looking for it, just go to ashleyburges.com. Ashley, B-E-R-G-E-S.com. I'm going to have all the information on that website as well as go to YouTube. Just check out YouTube. Go to YouTube and put in Ashley, B-E-R-G-E-S. I'm starting up a new digital show actually this week that's going to be live on YouTube and live on Facebook. It's going to be a very powerful show. I'm going to have some amazing interviews and we're going to do a weekly live show. It might even be more than that. Let's see what happens because we're going to have some fun. Stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in. Eh, You know what? I'll be back this time in two shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Today, we're talking about narcissism, but you know, better yet, we're talking about solution, what we can do and deal with the narcissist. We're talking about Gray Rock, and the thing about Gray Rock, real quick, if you missed the last segment, is that Gray Rock is the way of dealing with the narcissist without having to cut them out of your life. Okay, so if you have a child with an ex-narcissist, if you have a family member, a mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa that's a narcissist, that's a big one too, right? If you have a boss, right? Narcissist, you can't just, you're not just going to leave your job, no job, right? You got to deal with this and you can't go yelling at the boss. It's probably not going to protect your job very much, right? We're probably going to have some problems. But with Gray Rock, what we're doing is we're just keeping it really vanilla, We are keeping it vanilla. What we're doing here is we are basically homogenizing, homogenizing the concept of the communication. So what we're doing is we're cutting the drama, we're cutting the dramatic ties with the narcissist, and we're keeping the dialogue to a minimum. We're avoiding extra interaction that we don't need to have. Remember that. And we're not making a big deal out of anything like we used to. Remember, we used to make a big deal out of everything. Remember, we used to make a big deal every time 
time they would say something, we would start the drama. We would get sucked right into that, and we would start getting sucked right into that narcissism. And what would happen is we become that we become their supply, right? That's what they want. And so what we're doing is we're cutting the supply, so we're no longer their supply. And actually, what we are now is we're just kind of there. We're like the gray rock, like I talked about the rock. That's obviously it's essential, but we're keeping it real. We're keeping it real because we're going to talk about well, let's talk about the weather. So joining me here in studio, Reggie Harvey. Reggie is the author of Anatomy of a Patient, and he is here in studio. He's also the survivor of a near-death illness, and he's a good friend of mine. And the reason why I love his perspective is coming from his situation, you know, waiting on a transplant, going through that process of, of waiting on a transplant and walking through that changes your life perspective forever. Okay, that changes your whole dynamic. We know we're just not talking about somebody, you know, upset me or da da da. This is like you're dealing with real life situations and how you deal with it and how you deal with someone that's not adding to your quality of life. You understand what I'm saying? And that's such a big deal because the narcissist is not adding to your quality of life. They're not like helping you out. What they're doing is they're taking away from your quality of life. They're making your life even more troubling and more challenging and they're not giving you back anything. So why do we keep giving them the supply? Reggie, great to have you in studio. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm having a blast here. So we're talking about narcissism. We're talking about the gray rock concept. And I know that you've probably done this with somebody before where you literally just cut that drama. You cut that supply off because you realize you're feeding the narcissist. But when you finally realize you don't need to you don't want to feed them anymore, they kind of leave you alone. When was the last time that you've experienced that or how you went through that? Well, I had two. um two instances that come to mind. One was with a boss. You mentioned uh, dealing with that. And then the other was with uh, my mother. I had a great relationship with my mom that changed a lot as uh, I matured and became an adult. We went through a lot of phases. And um, <clears throat> my mom had done wonderful things for me throughout my life. And so I, w- I was very um, supportive and beholding to her, always looking for our opportunities to pay her back for the kindnesses and wisdom that she bestowed on me. But what I did not catch right away until I was about 35 is that she had fallen into a uh, habit of manipulating me in a passive aggressive way by not telling me what she really wanted, which is setting me up so that all of a sudden I was supposed to uh, go with her somewhere or show up somewhere or take her somewhere or take a trip with her somewhere without any warning, without any planning. And I used to accommodate that. And then finally, it hit me that this was a habit and I needed to break it. And and one, one evening when she called me at 730 to say I was going to take a trip with her the next day, and it was during the work week, I just listened to her give me the plans and, and, and run down the whole next few days. And when she finally shut up, I said, I'm sorry, but I'm not available. You'll have to go by yourself. That was the first time I ever just sort of bucked her plan. But the important thing when you were talking about gray stoking, and it's it's really something that I guess I've been doing all of my life. I didn't have a term for it. Uh, I was never good at uh, innuendo and hints. Uh, I was always a very literal person. If you wanted to ask me something, just ask me. If you hinted around about it, I didn't pick up on it. But um, to this point, I realized when I had this confrontation with my mom she was going to be pissed off. She was going to be angry that I had the balls enough to to (laughs) say no. And then she was going to be disappointed and all that stuff. And I had to quickly figure out how her anger was something she had to manage. I wasn't responsible for it. So before I hung up the phone, I said, now listen, I love you. I refuse to let you ruin my memory of you. Therefore, you are going to be the one to determine how long you choose to be angry with me for this conversation. But that's on you. I love you anyway. And then I hung up the phone. She didn't call me for two weeks. But we never went through that track again. Uh, And then what I learned from that is, as you mentioned, we accommodate people because we want them to like us, or we want them to be friendly with us, or I don't know, uh, politically correct with us. From that instant on, I knew if I could tell my mother 
go stuff it. And it's on you. I could tell anybody. And I didn't care. It was, it was a growth moment that I realized, oh my gosh, I'm 35 years old. I shouldn't be being pushed around by people. Um, the other thing was with my boss. I had this really insecure boss who wanted everyone to believe that he was the only one who had the correct perspective on anything. Uh, he could tell you, you could tell him that the sky was blue and he would say, no, it's raining. Uh, just a really weird person. Um, and for me, with me, since I never really played into his narcissism, he tried to play the father figure with me at work. And the only, the, the way I learned to gray stoke, uh, gray, gray stone, gray rock, gray rock. Thank you. Is just being blunt with people because narcissists don't listen and if you are nuanced in your speech with them, they'll interpret it any way that they want to. So with him, I was just completely concrete, blunt. And I just told him one day, listen, I have a father. I don't need a second one. That's not in my contract. <laughs> he never did know what to do with me. He was always frustrated, but he never gave up until the day I left that job he was trying to keep his finger on me. And I took pleasure in just um, not um, letting him push my buttons and listening very intently to his crazy arguments um, and not showing any emotional um, weakness at all. In fact, I would make him spell out to me precisely what it was he wanted. I didn't take any hints at all. So that was the way that I sort of learned over the, the years to do that. Now, since I've uh, had to uh, take on this uh, survivor role with um, my renal failure, I realized that these experiences that I had growing up and in my early work life have all contributed to my understanding of how to deal with my condition today. And I'd say having to be transparent with my illness today makes me completely comfortable in, in, um, I don't want to say disappointing people, but just not playing into their game. As you say, not playing the role in their, in their, uh, fantasy that they want you to play and not, not be upset because they're upset about it. That is the big, uh, key that I would tell people. You just cannot, uh, accept guilt for how the other party feels. That's on them. Powerful stuff, Reggie. Powerful. Where can people find the, your book online? Um, you can go to Amazon.com uh, and either put in my name, Reginald Harvey, or put in the title of the uh, memoir, which is Anatomy of a Patient, and it'll pop up. Or you can go to my uh, new website, which is ReggieHarvey.net, R-E-G-G-I-E-H-A-R-V-E-Y.net. And there you'll find a little um, biography on me and my illness and uh, a little description about the book. You'll find links uh, on that website that'll take you to Amazon where you can buy the book. And then further down, if you go to uh, um, podcasts, guest podcasts, you can catch the um, uh, interviews that I've had with you this, this year in 2019. Uh, our segments anyway. So thank you so much for having me. And I'm glad you brought up this topic because I've learned something today. I didn't know what that term was, but it was, it was a behavior that I had, I had taught myself and it does work. I can, I can, I can, I can say with 100% certainty that uh, that is the way you have to deal with those people because they are not logically engaged with you in the conversation that you're having or with the situation that's before you. They're in their own fantasy land, in their own uh, uh, miniseries, and you're just a, a prop. I totally agree with you, Reggie. I totally agree. I can't wait to see you next week on the show. We'll be talking more about the stuff that matters, again, in our personal relationships and in our lives. Um, hey, when we return, we'll be talking more about Gray Rock. We're going to be talking more about what you can do. We're also going to be talking about when it's the time to, well, cut ties for good. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in. We'll be back this time in two shakes. You could be my luck. 
get in here. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Today, we've been talking about narcissism. We've been talking about how to gray rock. And now I want to tell you more about gray rock real quick, because this is a big deal. Okay, Reggie made some really, uh, really amazing perspective because what he was talking about is that he was doing the tech, the technique without even knowing it. And many of you might be doing that right now. And one of the ways that we can gray rock somebody, remember gray rock, like I was saying earlier, when you see a gray rock, I mean, I like rocks, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm kind of a weird kid, you know, I love rocks, I collected rocks as a kid, but if you didn't collect rocks, it's not a big deal, right? But if you see a gray rock, you're going to see it and you're like, ah, it's a gray rock, not a big deal. So what we're saying is that you want to act like that. A gray rock doesn't stand out. A gray rock is not dramatic. So what happens with a gray rock when you're doing that with somebody that has narcissism? You're keeping the dialogue to a minimum, okay? You're not adding extra interaction. There's no extra interaction necessary for this, okay? We don't need to ask them questions. We don't need to talk about our personal issues, okay? We don't need to talk about marital issues or who you're dating or who you're having sex with. All this stuff needs to be off the table, Okay, because they don't deserve it because they're going to use it somehow to get you. Okay, you don't want to make a big deal out of stuff. You want to stick to the weather type talk. How was the weather? How are things going? How is this? How's it? But you want to keep it really easy, breezy, light. It was 95 degrees outside. (laughs) That was hot. And if they ask you questions, I want you to give short, uninspiring answers. <laughs> and, you know, this isn't like you're auditioning for something. This is like you're trying to get out of a situation that can cause you damage in the end, right? Because remember, you don't want them to use something against you that you said about yourself, about your relationship, about your marriage, about whatever, okay? So we don't want to talk about our personal life when we're dealing with a narcissist that we're just having to deal with. I don't care if it's baby mom a baby daddy I don't care don't give them any personal information to use against you don't give them any personal information to run with okay you know it and I know it that this person is not a trustworthy person in your life they're not there for you when stuff is bad they're not there for you you know when you're doing this Facebook live stuff man you got to do all this technology stuff in the background I just had to push a button to make sure it didn't go off but anyway you don't want to give so much information So you want to keep them out of your personal life. You don't want to tell them how well you are doing, by the way. Because if you're doing well, they don't want to know it. That's like not what the narcissist wants to know. They don't want to be like, oh, you're doing so great. That's so good for you. No, you know what they're saying? God, when they when you when they think you're doing well, guess what happens? Oh, well, I'm making all this money and I'm doing all this. And they just knock you back down. You're back down in the dirt. I had a I had a client that told some of their family members who were narcissists that they had just gotten this deal, and uh, they were so happy, and they had been really sweating it, and and work had been really hard for them, and they had been really scraping by, and somehow or not they found a way to like break this person down. They found a way to just it, it just it was sad because some, they were my client was trying to say something really great about their life and what like a success story and they were just they were just knocking them back down in the dirt okay so what i'm saying is don't bring up stuff that you're doing that's that's good just let it go don't sit there and tell them about your accolades and that's one of the hardest things to do because you we have a tendency of wanting people to like us or we have a tendency of wanting somebody to know we're doing well keep that out Don't talk about how great you're doing. You're not doing great. Just talk about the weather. Keep it really lame. And remember, don't ever give them the platform, okay? Don't give them the platform to tell you stuff, to get on that platform, because it's just going to hurt you. Because remember, the narcissist is not there for you. You are basically a co-host, not a co-host, sorry, (laughs) my bad. You're a supporting actor with very little, like, screen time. Okay, when you're in the narcissist soap opera, right? That's the deal. Okay, they didn't make the soap opera about you. (laughs) You know, you're just there when they remember you. I mean, and I hate to say it, but when the narcissist doesn't call you, let me give you the FYI on that. When they call, when they haven't called you, they think that you're an inanimate object that hasn't moved since the moment they called you. So when they call you, it's like, bam, oh my gosh, I'm back. 
You know, and they actually think that they are like, you know, you haven't done anything since the last time they talked to you, remember? Because you're just there for their beck and call. So I really want to sum up one thing before we leave today because, you know, I want to talk about the times when you do have to cut ties. If you don't have a child with a narcissist and you don't have family connections and and you don't have a boss, you really need to think about this. Do you need to go gray rock or is it time to let that relationship go? Okay, sometimes it's time to cut it out. Okay, if it's not redeeming of any sort and there's no reason why you have to stay in it, you need to let it go. And it's going to be hard because it's the opposite of anything you've ever done. Because we normally don't do it, right? We stay with it. We stay with it. We think we're the problem. We're the issue. If I just do that, it'll change the relationship. If I just act this way, if I just act this way, it's all going to be better. It's not. They're just going to take advantage of you more. They're going to make you feel bad. They're going to lower your self-esteem. They're going to cut you down as much as they can. They're going to be totally selfish, and they're only going to call you when they need something. And so it comes a time when we have to decide what can we deal with in our life? What can we deal with self-esteem way? What can we deal for our own self-worth? And what are we not going to accept anymore? Because you know what? That's why I call my book, Live Your True Life. That's why the show is called Live Your True Life Perspectives. That's why the second book is the 10-day challenge to live your true life. It's not about living someone else's life. It's not about, you know, giving into the narcissist. It's not about the codependency. It's not about being codependent in a relationship that they don't give a give anything you know this is uh am radio you got to be smart about that kind of stuff but you know what you know they're not going to give you anything they're not giving you anything they're not paying you and they're not doing anything it's time to let it go and so i want you to think about it is this a gray rock situation or is this a situation to cut it out and if you're going to cut it out that means doing it solidly and you being the leader It's about you leading for the first time, leading your life and doing what you got to do because it's time to lead. And a leader says, I've had enough. I've done everything I can. I've had enough of the narcissist. I'm no longer going to do this anymore. I am so tired of it because all it's doing is it's hurting my self-esteem. It's hurting my self-worth and it's getting in the way of me being my true self and living my true life. And if that's the case, I want you to cut it out. And if they ask you what happened, this relationship is not benefiting me. It has not helped me. And I wish you the best of luck, but I prefer that our relationship end. If you don't have the courage at this time to do that, then you know what there might, you know, there's, there's a whole thing about cutting out, about, you know, silencing calls, doing what you have to do. But the leader takes responsibility eventually and says it how it is okay you owe it to yourself because the more we say it how it is guess what the more self-esteem we grow the more self-worth we grow the more unconditional self-love we get and that's what the whole concept is unconditional self-love and that's what we're doing from a to b and that's what we're learning how to figure out and that's what we have to do and if we do it properly guess what it will be a stepping stone to your value and guess what that means that the narcissist wasn't a bad thing in your life it was a learning tool for your life that means that they came into your life for a reason to get you to say am i worthy finally or am i going to just follow again get behind them and follow and i want to walk real slow in the background because you know i don't want to hurt their feelings and i want them to be my best friend and i want them to like me so much you know what it's time for you to like you And if you don't stand up to them, you don't have to if you're not ready for it. But it's time to cut the people out that are no longer helping you, that are no longer there for you, that don't really love you. They just love the way you make them feel. And that's what the narcissist is. They want somebody to make them feel good because it's their supply. So I'm asking you right now to stop being the supply of the narcissist, to stop that. You don't deserve that kind of stuff. And also, guess what? When we stop being the supply, we begin to realize how often we've done it. And we also begin to realize our value. Once we show ourselves our own value, once we show ourselves internal value, guess what? We begin to feel better about ourselves. We feel more complete. And we begin to pursue people that actually resonate with that higher frequency. Okay, and I resonate with the higher frequency and so do you. If you're watching here on Facebook, if you're on 570 AM, if you're on KLIF.com backslash Ashley, whatever, I'm so glad that you 
turn into the show because I think that the show might have resonated with you. And if it didn't resonate with you, share it with your friends and family. It will be up on the website, ashleyburgess.com, B-E-R-G-E-S. There are no U's in Burgess. And also, it'll be up on Spreaker, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. You'll see it. You'll hear the podcast there, but it'll also be on the website. Don't miss YouTube and Facebook coming up. We have a live digital show coming out every week, coming up starting tomorrow. Um, And it'll be on YouTube as well. You can watch that live. You can watch it on Facebook. And also, don't forget that no matter where I am, there I am. So you will find the show. The show will be there. And I will have any new information up on the website so that you can find it. No problems. And Live Your True Life will be around to help with this knowledge. I hope this knowledge has helped you. Cut out the narcissist if you can. Otherwise, go gray rock. And in the process, begin to learn about yourself, build yourself up, and realize your your real true value because you have value live your true life perspectives with your host me ashley burgess will be back in i'll be back this time in three shakes